Good morning and welcome to Show Studio. This is the first of our menswear panels for fall winter 2016. Uh, today we're doing New London on the Man Show and we have a fantastic set of panelists. Um, if you'd like to start the intro, Sam. Yeah, sure. I'm Samuel Membry, um, fashion design, menswear fashion designer and uh, fashion lecturer. I'm Raina McKenzie and I'm a photographer. I'm Jay Levin, I'm a designer. I'm Greta Daini, I'm editorial assistant at Large ASOS Media. Thank you very much. Um, so, guys, I guess the first question, what did we think of the man show? I love Rory. You love Rory? The birds were sick. I thought they were sick, anyway. And Charles's installation in the middle. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. My favourite was Grace, though. I love everything that she does. Everything that she does is so... She manages to like bring history and make it contemporary and have incredible shapes and models and the music and everything was just incredible. Yeah, I'd agree. Uh, Grace's was really strong and I thought that there was some really interesting um, silhouette development in Rory's as well. Jade? I think the art, um, art direction for the second one was really cool. Like, I like the way it looked really good visually, and I think visuals are very important when doing presentations. Yeah, I spoke to I spoke to I spoke to Rory after after the show, and just kind of I thought it was quite interesting what he was saying because I really like the monk, the monk stuff. Yeah. And and I quite liked the just the, you know, the obvious kind of because yeah, there's like Nancy Boy written on stuff, but also because. You know, it's monk stuff, and I was like saying, well, it's quite streetwear as well. The and music was so good as well. It was that perfect. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> with the most. It was, I thought it was like the strongest man in, I don't know, like what other people think, but I thought it was the strongest of these for a long time. Like all three designers were like. I think that was Rory's most wearable collection. So yeah, far. definitely. Yeah, it had um, lots of pieces that you just could actually see really easily selling in, in stores. Whereas before it was kind of like, there were, it was a very kind of um, select guy that would that would actually take it on. I think it's definitely becoming more accessible. I thought that about all of them. I thought all of the collections were really wearable, especially Charles's one. Like I could just see people in Oddboy wearing that stuff normally. So it was really nice that that was what was on the show in the show because he wasn't trying to make it something super like couture or something. That's not really his style anyway. But it was just everything was really wearable and you'd see people wearing it all the time, which I thought was cool. And I thought the same about all the shows. How, um, what was, I know this is a little bit mean, but what was, uh, what was your favourite of the three? I think Charles's was, it was fun, wasn't it? You know, I, I, love, I love all of them, but when Charles puts on like a show, do you know what I mean, like a proper show, like you're like interested, mm -hmm. you want to see it. Yeah. For you, Jay? Um, I like Grace's thing. Um, um, the collection just spoke to me. I liked, I liked the way she pieced it and styled it. Overall, just, just wavy. I really liked it. <laughs> <laughs> For you, Ronan? Oh, yeah, Grace's was my favourite. I mean, I really like that she uses some of the same guys throughout and the way, obviously, she talks about how um, she wants her collections to relate to each other and it's sort of to be an ongoing thing, I think, really came through. And, yeah, I thought that was the best. Um, it's, I kind of agree with, yeah, I kind of prefer Grace's of the three, but I think they all had some really strong elements. Um, I think the reason I prefer Grace's is because I actually have a really strong um, appreciation and affinity for the references that she's into yeah, and the music styles from that era and, you know, it's such a vibrant kind of um, time in, 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 uh, in the 70s, in the 70s and, and, you know, like the, the whole kind of music culture. Well, yeah, let's because I thought I'd kind of talk about each show in in turn. So, so yeah, just um, it's in yeah, I guess because she won best emerging designer. Well, maybe I'll, I'll let, maybe I'll talk about that last because because it comes back to that. So yeah, just start with the seventies, just with the seventies and the velvet and the. I don't know. I kind of feel like did Gucci come after right? The kind of Gucci show that was like a year ago. Where, mm. um, you know, he was doing that 70s thing and a lot of high fashion people are doing, I mean, maybe Prada was on it too. Yeah. Um, 
What do you think to the 70s vibe, Cora? Because I don't see you wearing <laughs> many 70s clothes. Do you know clothing. what, yeah, I do, actually, I, I do like it on other people, but it's not for me. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But I do, I love Grace. Yeah. But I love the suits, but... What do we is think? That, is that velour? What oh, is that? Cause it's velvet, no? I'm into a velour tracksuit, don't get me wrong. <laughs> well, what do we think? Because one of the things that I find quite interesting about Grace is... I think one of the reasons why the fashion industry likes her so much, in a way, is because obviously she's selling hardcore luxury, mm. whereas so many people coming up through London have been doing club wear or been doing um, street wear. She's doing hardcore luxury. So for, like, you know, Vogue Runway, they're like, oh, this is our shit. Um, I don't know what, what you guys think. I think it's really important. Like, I think it's really, really cool because I have a big thing about... Um, like the way that black people are portrayed in, in fashion and the media. And I think it's really important what she's doing and the way that she's doing it because she's bringing in all these historical references that a lot of people wouldn't have heard about or wouldn't have known about. And she's really make, not even trying to make them contemporary, but sort of having an appreciation for them in the way that she designs and the, the models that she chooses. And the, the pieces just look really cool. Like you would see somebody wearing them and you wouldn't sort of like, you'd look at it because it was amazing, but you wouldn't sort of think that they looked sort of out of place. Um, and it's just, I think it's really cool what she's doing because there aren't a lot of designers who use v really obvious and massive black casting in a show that's supposed to be elegant. And she does that and it still looks elegant, it still looks classy, it still relates to a lot of people. And I don't think, I can't think of any other designers that use her, would use a casting like hers for a really elegant show. Yeah. Yeah, it's super honest, isn't it? The way she's responding to her references and to her kind of love of what she's into. But there is something really amazing about the way she takes things that literally look like they come straight out of like Afrobeat documentaries mm -hmm. or something like that. But it doesn't feel like costume, it feels yeah, like yeah, contemporary yeah. fashion. Yeah. But it is, again, it is something that has developed into a more wearable look now and feels more accessible to a, an average guy who could actually, you know, wear even, I, I think that there's definitely a, a white or European audience for this style as well. It doesn't just look right on the, the models that yeah. she presents it on. I think it could look good on... I, know, I've, I've, I quite liked having like one yeah, white one guy, white guy yeah, with the in, amazing in hair. In her shows yeah. before, hasn't she like had not, not had any white people in it? Yeah, but I kind of thought it was more funny to have one. Because it's, it's a perfect a bit like, guy though as well, isn't it? And the perfect look for him with it's that like sort the of opposite. track suit. It's yeah, like it's the like opposite like of every other mm -hmm. show. Every yeah. other show she's like one token black person or one token Asian to be like, yeah, we check the box, we're not racist. And she sort of turned it around. And I'm not sure if that was what she was trying to do. I'm sure it wasn't, but it's just, yeah. It's it was funny kind to of, me. At first when I saw it, I was like, what's that? What's he doing in there? But then it works. Um, yeah, and I, I, I like um, that guy, the, the super sort of androgynous Asian guy. Um, he was in the, the presentation at the ICA as well, I think, mm. the one about um, the, the sort of emperor, uh, I think he was like an Ethiopian poor guy who'd become a like emperor in India yeah, or something. Yeah. And uh, I thought that was an amazing story and as well because um, I grew up in a super Pakistani area in Leeds and so I kind of got some of that, you know, it's like the early, well the mid 80s. So still some of the older brothers dressed a bit 70s, do you know what I mean? And I kind of could almost smell hair hills. It was weird. <laughs> I could almost like, like smell that, like my friends' houses and stuff just from looking at the clothes. It was kind of, and I thought that was kind of cool because nobody's really like, no, like you know, that's like an even lesser said story. Like, yeah, definitely. I think um, like black people are, for, and for me anyway, are misrepresented or underrepresented. Represented. But then to look at like Indians and Arabs and all these other types of Asians and stuff, there's like nobody. Like, there's no one, you will hardly find anyone. So it's nice that they're being brought through as well. And I think there should be more of that. There should be way more of that. And it shouldn't be like, a, like a surprise a to novelty, see it. Yeah, yeah it exactly. Be, yeah. And, um, and um, yeah, and what do we think though to like the hard sort of luxury of it? Do you think like, um, you know, Jay, obviously your, your you know, no nowhere that you design is, is it's very streetwear. Do you yeah. can you see? Are there things from this that you can incorporate into your that you can see kids wearing, or you can see like being worn, 
or do you think it's too luxury? Do you think this only is going to appeal? Like, do you think like, hey, it's going to be massive? And I mean, I can see with the Jella Bayers, like, I mean, that's been like hitting fashion for like a few years now. It's like at any second you can feel the weight of people trying to push that look and you're like, that's going to become a look. And that's quite easy to incorporate, but like maybe the velvet suits, I don't know, what do you, are we going to go back to an elegant kind of a thing or? I don't think so. Um, it's possible, but I don't think kids my age will be really interested in fashion like this. I think it's too luxury. I don't think it needs to be a bit more toned down, a bit more relaxed. See that tracksuit there? Like, I reckon we that could be like a sort of stepping stone into yeah. like getting more into that. Once. But you can't you can't go straight from like a night tracky to yeah. that. Like, it's, it's not. I don't know though. Sorry to cut you off. I think it's it's also what's really nice in the show is all about like male sexuality, and I think the people she's representing, like black men especially, are really, in my opinion, over sexualized, and it's always in one persona. It's always like a big black guy who's very masculine, very muscly, and you never really appreciate this sort of masculinity, and I think it's really important, especially with young black guys. I mean, if I imagine I was shooting like a 15-year-old boy from Walthamstow, and I bought one of these, these really super tight, high-waisted tracksuits, I'd probably look at me and be like, what the fuck, like, there's no way I'm putting that on. But if that we saw more of it, and it wasn't such, I don't know, it wasn't seen as the way it is, maybe it'd be different and maybe guys would be sort of more open to wearing this sort of thing if they didn't think that it connoted something really negative for them. And then um, I can't help but come to Jaden Smith and Lou Vuitton. So, because what do you, because what I kind of like about, because, well, I'm either going there or Larry V. Do you know Larry V? Yeah, I love Larry. I do know Larry. Because Larry would, you know, Larry would wear this with streetwear. But that's, Larry's a steezy guy. Larry can do what he wants. Like Larry B and, you know? and Jaden Smith are a completely different thing. And I feel like, I mean, I don't know him personally. I've seen him out. I guess everybody's out and seen him out somewhere. And he just he just does his thing. And he looks so confident in it. He looks incredible. And he's just... he's just Yeah, he's on his own vibe. Yeah, he's doing his own thing. But whereas Jaden Smith is just sort of... I think especially when you, your parents are in the media and you're suddenly, you've suddenly got this fame and he, him and Willow have been given all these platforms to be like, yeah, but stand for this and I stand for this. Then he's suddenly been thrown into this Louis Vuitton thing as, as in a girls' campaign, whereas the whole rest of... I mean, there was obviously that anime thing which was quite cool, the cartoon, but like the shot I saw of Jaden and those three, like, any white girls who were just, like, doing these positions, I was just like, this is... It was boring. Um, I was not impressed. It was more annoying all. when he was like wearing a dress, and everyone's like, "Oh my god, he's wearing a dress!" It's like, "It weren't even a dress, mate." Yeah. He's wearing yeah. like a long t-shirt. What, yeah. what 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 I like in a way though, um, Grace said something that kind of hurt me a little bit, not to my face, but in an <laughs> interview where she said what you've just said about the one way um, black men are represented, and because I work for Complex, mm. I'm very aware, and um, you know, I'm very aware of, of that, mm. you know. And, uh, and I thought, yeah, she's, she's right, I need to kind of think about this shit. And, um, and then, so what I liked about Jaden was Complex had been really behind, because um, I know what you're saying about him being a big celebrity and stuff, and I agree, but Complex had been really behind him, mm. and, and I think that that's quite interesting, that, that they've been behind, because he's worn a few kind of women's yeah. pieces of the, the time. So I thought that was quite interesting, because also, um, when I was younger, I, I lived with a DJ who had a, oh, what's his name, Rick James. And Rick James's record and that representation, you know, a man in women's wear mm. who was known okay. for like being able to call any woman he wanted. You know, yeah. he was like the ultimate man's man, yet he wore women's wear. And I sort of, I don't know, I just found that. That might have been because of the credibility of the music around mm. and, and, and his kind of, um, his kind of, um, that amazing kind of, not vulgar ego, but he had this amazing kind of like presence, you know, and, and it was just kind of like mesmerizing. Just, you know, and, and if you have that, then you can kind of play off that and, mm. and, and manipulate things in a way that other people can't. So, especially when you have that platform. But I think, it, I think that, I mean, I haven't actually, to be honest, I haven't actually really engaged that much with the whole Jade and Willow 
thing. It's not really my area, mm. but um, <laughs> I did see the um, the I was it the dazed shoot or ID shoot with Willow recently. Yeah, yeah. Hi. And I thought that was really amazing because cool. I really, really like the seventies really cool. mixed with the futuristic aspect in that, which I think is something that is sort of coming through here a little bit more than in previous um, uh, Grace collections. I think that with the tracksuit especially and this sort of like tight sportswear top mm. um, and, the, the, and those more sportswear references which weren't usually in there before, um, I think it's, I think it feels contemporary enough for your kind of um, adventurous male fashion customer to, to, to engage with now, personally. I think I think I certainly agree with that. I think maybe I don't think the Jaden thing is negative is like particularly negative. I just think it could have been better maybe if the guy was like an unknown and then it'd be more of a statement because it'd be like they're really doing something new. Whereas I don't know, I don't think Louis Vuitton's customers will really be interested whether it's Jaden or not. Maybe they're trying to make their audience younger or something like that, but I just thought it was a bit like they're trying to do something but they're too worried to go like do it properly, so they're just going to hit like a mark where people are like, oh, that's quite cool, and then they'll sort of forget about it in case nobody liked it, sort of thing. I'm sure, I'm sure. Jay, any last words or thoughts? Um, I think the Jaden Smith thing was really iconic. Like, I think most celebrities are like forced into this fake image that they're supposed to have, but I think with Jaden Smith, he's really trying to be himself. I don't think the... Um, I don't think it's that negative. Like I think what Louis Vuitton are trying to do, I think they're trying to become more more appealing to the youth, I think. And I think by doing that through Jalen Smith has is gonna open doors for more young people. So I don't really see it as a bad thing. I think it's quite good. And and actually one 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 last point with Grace, one of the things that I've really liked um has been like uh I think one of the first things I saw of hers was like the book. You know, she did like a little book for her first collection and she did, she's done films. And I was thinking, um, I've always liked designers that have come with content mm. and, and come with extra stories and not just a collection. Um, what do you guys think to that? Do you think it's important? Do you think Yeah, it's, it's definitely important to have like more and to, and to, to produce more content that kind of... Um, makes your universe more explicit and makes it more, not explicit in a kind of like, you know, parental guidance kind of way, but in a sort of like, just gives the viewer and the, and the, um, the onlooker a lot more to interact with than just like, oh, it's, you know, a collection of clothes that I have mm. to spend money on. I can actually connect with what they're thinking about and, and, and um, you know, it, it just adds so much value and so much kind of, um, wealth and, and to, to the experience of, of, of connecting with that designer, I think. Cora, as a writer, what do you think? Because you... It's like, do you know Ryan Hawaii? Of course. It's like with him, he is like the whole package, like you're not just getting like an item of clothing, like he's like everything. You, like, yeah, he Ryan's a rock star still. He, like, I'd love to see him on the panel because he has got so much to say, like he's sick, but he does everything and you want to know everything that he's doing. And when you talk to him, you're just like, it's everything. Like now he's like being a rapper. It's like he's just decided he's being a rapper, and now he's just toured like the whole of Europe because he's decided he's being a rapper. Like, and yeah. And the story, and the. It's just like he's got a story. It's always a story. It's like I'm doing this and we're going and just. He's very interesting. Well, I guess because in a way that that almost brings, does to love a boy because. Um, you know, and also, and also, you know, because I think it's quite interesting this idea of energy versus product. Um, for a long time, I feel a bit weird as a fashion journalist because I know that my sympathy is with energy. You know, sometimes people are going on about the product, and I'm like, well, you don't have ten thousand pounds to buy that coat, so mm. what are you talking about? But you can consume the energy, um, and in in you can buy the perfume or whatever. And, um, and, and, and so Loverboy, that's quite interesting because Loverboy feels like, I mean, really it's about the energy, right? Did, did you say you actually go to Loverboy? No, but I'm, I, well, I had a two-week stint at St. Martin's and a lot of my friends who are still there go to Loverboy regularly and really enjoy it. And a lot of friends 
or have mutual friends with him and like I can see where it's coming from and the people that are in his shows and like the one where all the was it a presentation or whatever where um he had all those people just like dancing and stuff which was really cool because you never really see that anymore in fashion shows and presentations and stuff and and and, <coughs> and Jay I know you know with with your brand it's very much a product the name is very strong part of it the the manifesto is you know I, I know because I write about streetwear a lot and trying to explain about streetwear and how the branding is it can be quite an ordinary garment sometimes in yeah. some ways and it's about the branding and it's about the message and um yeah why why do we think it's i don't know what what do we think about the message versus product well uh, charles's last presentation is basically you walked into a party that's exactly what he's like trying to do it's like you know this is like my friends modeling my clothes which they would wear to my party that's it like. yeah and do you think it's, because it's quite interesting because the fashion people love him, don't they? Like, you know, I, I saw... Love that suit, that baby blue suit. Sick. It is amazing. <laughs> so how much, is it? Is it all his collection? Because I was speaking to him yesterday, but unfortunately I got power moved by Sarah Moa. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't say anything, she just, you know... Came into the came into the vicinity, and I was like, "No, nah, it's fine. You go, and, you go and make money." But like, <laughs> you know, um, yeah. How much of the collection is actually? Is it all his stuff, or is some of it found? Do we know? Well, all the belts and stuff. I, it's a lot of styling, isn't it? That's, I thought that when I was watching. I was like, if it weren't for the styling, I don't know if it would be as good. Mm. But. I do love it, but there is a lot of styling in it. But that's fine. I mean, everybody does that, right? But I just wasn't quite sure if all of the clothes are his or if there's also a kind of mix of vintage in here as well. You're allowed to do that. It looks like <laughs> if I am not. You, I don't know if that's allowed. Because some of it's customised, right? So, which obviously is completely legit. So, like, I know in, like, the last thing, uh, the painted denim, obviously, is customised and he hasn't made the denim. But then, you know, Vetamon, who everybody, you know, wants to die for, is also, you know, cutting up old jeans and saying them back together. So it's kind of, it's fine. I love that dress as well. Such good models. Actually, interesting models. Like uh, The casting was... So good. So, so So interesting. Good. The boy with um, the, the hair and the glasses on top. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't there was a couple of people I was doing. like, backstage, I was like, oh, I know you from Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I, think the sh I think the collection's cool, but at the same time, like when I'm watching a show or checking clothes or whatever, I like to sort of relate to it. And although I really, I think it looks really cool, I just don't, it doesn't really do anything for me because I don't really connect with it and I'm not really in that sort of scene. So, as much as I think those those painted jeans and the jacket and that guy looks sick, I could just it doesn't do anything more than that what. For me. What do we think? So when I, because I think what he's doing is great. Mm. But when I read in days, leader of, of a new generation of club kids, I kind of thought, mm. well, whose generation? I was a little bit like, it's like he's he he rules right now. He rules St Martin's. He rules kind of like East London, and I think that's great, and I think mm. more power to him. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm kind of, I kind of wonder, is the, it's a very fashion take on fashion. It's very fashion take on fashion rebellion, mm. in a way. Do you remember like a couple of years ago, there was this guy, it's a really obscure reference, but maybe you know, there's a guy called like Leopold or something, and he used to go out wearing like red lipstick, and his face was like painted all white, and all his group of friends, used to go out with like really bright lipstick and their face all painted in these really like clothes that really reminded of this. Does anyone know that guy? <laughs> okay, well, that's what it reminded me of and that was like a really small group of people and they're doing, well, I don't know if he had something to do with this but like it really reminded me of this and it's sort of like, yeah, like it's a new thing that's happening now but it's kind of just a certain... It's just certain old, it is old fashioned though, isn't it? It feels very dated to it me. It is, it is dated. In terms of the, um, all of the silhouette, the references, the the makeup. Um, I, quite, I, I like this. Is my favorite yeah. outfit here, number twenty-three, with the weird corduroy suit, with the kind of like almost like hooligan-looking. Have you seen like, like those, those memes and stuff where it's like a boy in the corner, like with his hoodie all done up, 
and it's like when you're high as fuck and blah 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 and you're just sitting in the corner like you're spazzing out that's what that reminds me of yeah totally well i think i think i, I like <laughs> <laughs> it does look like it's spazzing yeah. i like this nick rhodes guy as well on the left the, 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 he, look, he looks like the guy from trying to run the key yeah yeah, yeah. But like, um, I think as well, because I, I have this thing where I'm like, I think what you guys have just said, but then I went to the ICA presentation and obviously I've been to Vogue Fabrics a million times and I can just imagine, <laughs> I've never been to Loverboy, but I can just imagine, you know, what, I mean, Vogue Fab, you know, you just know that being in the middle of it would be amazing. Really yeah, fun. it's obviously sure. very experiential and very mm -hmm. kind of about a kind of an energy that's kind of obviously um, engulfing a, a, a community of, of, of kind of um, quite outrageous people but I don't know whether it's it doesn't feel particularly fresh to me it feels like something I've seen many times yeah. and, and from an, an era that has had its had its moment in a way for me anyway. I like I think what I like in one way though is if if he's using the club as a, because I agree with you, but if he's using the club almost as like a real life mood board, because to me clothes are for dancing. If clothes aren't for dance or looking good in a nightclub, what are they for? That's totally what they're for. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so That's like, totally what they're for. so, so like in a way, like there's no great laboratory of, of, of fashion science than a nightclub. And if all these kids are coming together and like throwing shade at each other with their looks or just trying to excite each other with their looks, then... What if they're enjoying it and, 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 it, and it's creating a, you know, a, a, a costume or, 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 or an outfit in which to enjoy that, that, that moment, then, it, then it's an awesome thing, but it doesn't necessarily I think, but I know some of the mean people much more than that, you know? That go to it, and I think some of their looks are, mu like, are much more exciting than this. Do you know what I mean? I'd probably love this. Are, yeah, they probably but like are. some of the people that go look amazing, like crazy. So maybe I don't know. I think like you yeah. said, like it has a really nice energy to it and you can see that the people are probably really enjoying themselves and when he was creating the clothes he was having a really good time and sort of it was really for the club scene. But I'd kind of be interested to see who's actually buying it and how they wear it. Because I'm sure all these people obviously it's like really fashiony so it's probably quite expensive so I wonder if these people would be able to afford it and if not who's actually wearing it and how are they styling it and are they wearing it like it's shown here well I find that really interesting mm. the fact that everybody comes up does these clothes and like nobody can afford it yeah so like you know I've got cab on that's quite cheap Whereas most of the London designers are at twice the price. Mm. But Nazir has opened a web store, so... Great. <laughs> Sorry, plug there. <laughs> um, but do you know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, it's this weird dichotomy between everything everybody's saying mm. and, quite frankly, the life a lot of people are living because there's a lot of people living with their mum. There's a lot of people, like, <laughs> who, you know, can't afford to go out. Yeah. And, you know, and then... The clothes that they're selling, it's always that weird. But then I guess artists, I mean, if, if you think about artists have always sold things for, to rich people and while being, you know, representing the street. But it does always strike me as quite strange. I kind of get it in the way that obviously, like, they've had to put a lot of time and effort in actually making the pieces and it's worth a lot. It is worth a lot because of what's gone into it. And I get that, but at the same time, if it's this sort of new wave of club kids, I doubt any of them could afford it. And so, who who's actually buying it and who's wearing it? Because it's not going to be the people that potentially it's intended for. I do, I do also, yeah. I do also think, though, looking at the things, it's not... You know, I've seen designers come up who were selling in a similar... had a similar story, and their clothes did look like they'd been thrown together in five minutes before a nightclub, and these don't. Yeah. I think these look quite well put together. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, there's definitely a skill and a, and a, and a, and a level of execution there that is, yeah. that is worth what they're going to be charged, mm. uh, what they're going to be sold for. Um, but I totally agree with you in terms of an audience for it. I mean, like, if you strip each individual piece off yeah, and imagine yeah. them on their own, yeah. like, you could see some of them in another context. You could see some of them being worn with, for instance, 
some pieces from Grace's collection or maybe even mm -hmm. some pieces from other collections that you've seen or that you're going to see in the next few few days and weeks. But I, as, a, as an entire message, I don't find it very um, modern or, or, or something that's going to take off in terms of exactly as it's being presented there. Mm -hmm. But the individual pieces do look really nice yeah. um, and really creative. Jay, you've got some interesting stuff to say about this kind of idea of you know, being a fashion brand, but also representing the youth mm. and kind of, you know, the fact that you can sell out, well, the, the, this kind of dichotomy between I want to be a brand, I want to be famous, I want to make it, and actually this is bullshit. And, uh, cause, cause it, you know, so I think that's really interesting because I think we're all aware of that. I mean, you know, you even see, like, Every time Kanye is interviewed, you see his brain split in two as he tries to represent both sides. Yeah. I think, as a designer, I think if you're making clothes, you have to actually be able to... Um, your customers, you need to be able to represent them. If you're not representing them accurately, there's no point redesigning. Because I think designing is supposed to be problem-solving. And if you're not really problem-solving, your design is not really um, valid in a way. I think... Tell us about your manifesto. Um, my manifesto is about basically materialism and how, as kids in my generation, or in my, just my age group, they're like, or forced to like buy into like Supreme, buy into Palace and everything, but I think it's deeper than that. I think as a kid um, in today's age, you have to be more, um, what's the word? You have to be, um, you have to uh, stand up for something. Yeah, I think you have to represent something. And these these kids buying into their brand, they're only buying into the brand because they've seen other people wearing it. I think fashion needs more individuality and more people standing up for themselves. And that's what I'm trying to bring into the fashion industry. But yeah, I just think like on I, I released a cap like two years ago, and on the back it said your life is a lie. That meant that what you see now isn't really real. Like, that's not, you say you like Supreme, but do you really only, you, you only like it because you've seen other people wear it. That's not really you. I just think that fashion has to be, I just feel like fashion has lost its realness. Like people, nothing's really real anymore. I saw a, a guy, he's a, quite a successful creative director in Hong Kong. And I said to my friend, oh, look at him with his uh, Supreme phone. And my friend, she knows about these things. She was like, that's fake. I was like, he's really rich. And she was like, that's a fake. <laughs> that's a fake Supreme iPhone cover. I was like, do you think he knows? Is that like an extra layer? Um, but that's interesting. So your thing about your life is a lie. And so what are you, what, what, what are you trying to say with that, with your life is a lie, with, um, um, with a that the peop things people are following are, to, to make people question the things they're following? Yeah, I want people to, like, my, when I created it, I thought, I was, if someone's wearing my hat on the chain, I want people to see the back, the back of their hat and see your life as a lie. And I want them to think to themselves, oh, shit, am I really doing this? Like, am I really a slave to all these trends? Am I really but you myself? you wear a Rolex, so <laughs> <laughs> invalid. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ooh, um, <laughs> But isn't that the point? <laughs> but isn't that the point? Yeah. Like, isn't I'm it? not trying to say that I'm the perfect representation, but mm. I'm trying to make people aware of that there's two sides to the, to the battle. Like, you can... I think in the future it should be possible to be able to represent both sides of being conscious and also being an individual in fashion. Yeah, because isn't that the point? Like I was saying in the green room earlier, all I see on my Facebook feed are people that are really angry about, you know, if another, um, <coughs> uh, fashion writers, fashion writers keep putting the most socialist things up. And I'm like, well, who's gonna buy all the Prada? Cause, cause you know, like, they, 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 you know, so this is the, you can be anti the system while being part of it. If you're not allowed to mm -hmm. oppose it while being part of it, then, that, that that's that's like that's such a, a 
a conundrum, isn't it? Because then you're just a prisoner. Oh, you bought in, therefore you're a prisoner. And then that's the answer, you know. Well, you have to question the parts of the system that you don't feel are correct, or you, you have to you have to be able to look at the picture and dismantle it mm. and find a way to um, fit within it and operate within it because there is no other alternative. Mm. That, you know, the, the picture's there. We're all in it. And um, there's, lots of, um, there's lots of things in the fashion industry that probably every single one of us here and every single person who's even engaged in the fashion industry um, today doesn't like about the industry. As, you know, the, you, you were talking about the misrepresentation of... Um, um, black models or, or, or um, black culture in the industry and how it's kind of like it's a shame that is it when a designer looks at that it's a bit of a novelty or something like that there is so many things that you can you can question but I think that this this idea of kind of like um, kind of like people gravitating around something very very quickly and, 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 and following it just because it's kind of snowballing and, and, and everybody's jumping on that bandwagon that is that is a thing that's become very very prominent um, recently, in, 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 especially with things like social media and the internet, and it's um... well. What what do we think as well? Because I think one of the things that's quite interesting, I, I was saying to Judith, uh, my boss at St Martin's, is that often I find people are talking about race or sexuality or um, feminism, and I think well, your real problem with fashion is a uh, you know that. It, it's oppressive full stop. You'll never find a way of it not being oppressive because it's a system built on saying, hey, you're not good looking enough, you know? Or, or saying, hey, you're, I'm in and you're out. I'm sat in the middle of this circle and I'm in and uh, the people watching this, you're out. And you know, and like, and, uh, uh, that, that's absurd, <laughs> obviously, but that's kind of what it's built on, you know? Charles Jeffrey's thing is, is built on that. So there's no moral thing, but when when I read all the stuff attacking Louis Vuitton for jumping on uh, gender stuff, I was like, well, if you, you know, that's so obvious if you read anything, that's so obvious that that's what capitalism does. It picks up things in it. I don't even have a problem with it. I think it's great. I think it's fantastic if the only way you can sell a handbag is by improving, um, you know, the representation of minorities. I think that's fantastic. But... It's obvious that's what it it does, and I kind of think it's interesting because I think mean, it's interesting in a way. And there's a point to this rant. It's interesting <laughs> in a way that that because I feel a bit like a vampire, you know, because I'm like, uh, oh yeah, I'm gonna have like these young people on, and they're gonna talk about New London, and then like I'll be like the guy that knows about new things, <laughs> and like and you know, and I think, but the, the, there's obviously quite an important. I've had other friends say to me, Darius, I'm sick of being like the young guy like the person on somebody's arm and I'm like well yeah but it's a really great way to get get places because you can decorate for a while and then you get things you shouldn't worry about it so yeah what do you think to like 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 what do you think to kind of the vampire aspect of fashion where like these old people are like kind of trying to do things through young people and kind of steal young people's looks and steal young people's identity and but that's always that's... you're always gonna look to younger people like there's young people now that I look at on Instagram that are like 15 I'm like fuck you're cooler than me what's going on like what's like it's always like that you're, I agree mm. it's always going to be younger people with like fresh ideas and it's cool like why not but you're talking about the um, the the when when, when um, people in positions of power extract that and kind of um, manipulate it for a, um, a commercial intent, for, so like with, with the Louis Vuitton thing. I think that could be just because there's like a massive gap like in fashion and it's like there's young people who are like doing stuff and making cool stuff and obviously there's older people as well but there's people who are creating all these ideas and then there's people who are actually buying it and that's like a completely different thing like it's just so, so, so separated so obviously like people who are high up and trying to sell stuff need the ideas of the people who are creating all these new things and things that people are really in find interesting so they can sell it and i think that's probably always going to happen but at the same time fashion is so much more than clothes now like it's not just like we we're talking about with grace and this charles as well like it's more than just the clothes there's a whole idea behind it 
and that can still be really good and beneficial for like the young people because we can talk about it and we can create new newer things and we can know like more stuff about history and where it comes from and that's not necessarily such a bad thing that well obviously it's not nice that only like really rich people and older people or people higher up than us are benefiting it benefiting from it but we're still getting something out of it yeah i think i think that whole vampire thing is about to change i think more and more young people they're becoming more independent their ownership is increasing so i don't think i think this system of where there's older people leeching ideas of the young people. I think that's going to stop. I really think that there's more and more young people that are more aware of the whole system now. And now I think, I think more, my prediction is that more and more young people start working together. They'll start collaborating and more old people fall out of place. So I think, and I think by, do, by young people collaborating, it will really um, just really change the system and there's going to be more. Well, there's less gatekeepers. Yeah. But I think at the same time, it's it's good to collaborate with people who are older than us and people who have, like, you, like you've been in the industry way longer than I have, or I'm even getting into now. So it's not a bad thing for us to, like, collaborate. It's just good that, I think, anyway, it's becoming more of a collaborative thing, not more that, like, it's a vampire situation where you're stealing all of our ideas. Obviously, that happens, but I really feel like now our voices are being heard by people like you who have been in the, in the industry longer, and it's... You're not like stealing our ideas and putting your name on it. It's like an, it's appreci an appreciative thing, and mm. I think that's happening it's more and more. It's a good vampire. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah vampire. exactly, <laughs> exactly. Well, the blood tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so bring you know from vampires to monks. So, Rory Parnell, Mini, um, you, you said you were a big fan. Tell, us, tell me why you're a big fan of Rory. I'm biased because I love Rory as a person, but <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, it's, just, it's dark, but all of his silhouettes are just sick, and them hoodies, I mean, two, two hoods have been done before, but it's kind of like that Vetterman's hoodie, you know, the one that everyone went crazy for. It's, it's a basic hoodie, but, you know, there's something about it. And what did you... Cause I asked him about Nancy Boy because I... I, you know, that, that kind of funny cliche about everybody who is in fashion was a bullied kid. And, uh, and I said to him, you, you know, there's that funny cliche because like, and obviously, you know, when you're growing up gay, it's like, it's like the worst. There, there's a, I don't know, because I, I grew up in the 1920s or something. <laughs> so like, it's like the worst possible thing or it was for me. And, uh, and he said, yeah, you know, I went to a super Catholic school and it was, and like now, that's not the case, so that's why I'm embracing it. What do you think to that, that kind of... Do you think there's any know. validity? Do you think, you know, like... People still say Nancy Boy, is that still a thing? Like, no, I, I don't think like, so. Yeah, I thought I it was really sweet, it. though. Maybe, yeah, I thought it was maybe cool. lovingly. Yeah, I think, it, I, I think it looks cool, but at the same time, I was, first time I saw it, I was like, Nancy Boy, like, I'm sure I've heard this from older people but this is still something people say i mean i get the message behind it as well but well, it's also a placebo song isn't it uh they're a band oh, yeah. and the catholic church <laughs> is just weird anyway. I, I remember that <laughs> but i think it's also like there's a thing that like you know you can see it with charles jeffrey there's a thing when you're like you leave school and suddenly you're like yeah it can be gay and you go to london it'll be gay yeah yeah, yeah. No. and like um yeah, and so I think for, for him it's like super empowering to use the word Nancy boy, you know? Mm. People, I mean, like, obviously Ashish has done stuff with that before. It's like, it's not a new thing, but it is really sweet. It's like a sweet, a sweet thing. Nancy, I don't know. It like, seems it's like nice. you're saying it's sweet, but I'm not getting a sweet vibe from it. It doesn't really? feel like something that you would kind of tie with that connotation of Nancy mm. Boy as a collection. I don't see exactly. the word Nancy Boy fitting with that collection. I agree. Other than yeah. on kind of like one outfit, which is the satin top with the neck yeah. thing, which would probably look more in place in another colour in maybe Grace's collection, for instance. But, yeah. I mean, for instance, this look here, uh, number 35, um, you can see any, any guy who's into skateboarding or or whatever. Well, to, to, to me, to an extent, Nancy boy, I apologise, world, but like mm. actually, almost got a bit in the way, right? Because okay. I was like, I love these I think clothes. It's yeah, I yeah. Think. I think I think if you took Nancy boy out, actually, the collection 
feels more relevant. I think it would yeah. be a. Com- it seems like a completely different thing because, like, you're obviously saying it's about being gay, and you know, like, it was really. It wasn't a nice thing to say, and now it's empowering. But at the same time, the clothes aren't really for me. Having a message that has got anything to do with. I mean, I don't know that much about gay like culture, this, but I'm, it's not screaming that. This one. I love that last 38 one. Thirty-eight is just it's such a kind of aggressive, masculine look, but it's also mm. got an amazing, delicate, modern silhouette with those baggy, lightweight trousers, and the um, you know the way the, the face is hidden. It doesn't feel in any way Nancy to me. Well, what I thought was interesting about Rory was he was um, had a CSM show about two years ago, uh, his MA, maybe it was two years, a year and a half, something like that. And um, I remember being like, wow, he was the best designer there. And he had like quite a sort of Japanese silhouette going mm. on, and it was before mm. the show where Astrid, uh, there was a season where Astrid and Craig Green both did quite a Japanese mm. kind of silhouette. and. Um, and so I think he's, you know, he's really strong on on that and, and that kind of looking quite fashion, but also looking quite street, mm. which which I think is quite an interesting place to be. Yeah, it's definitely something that um, has really solidified in menswear recently is that looking like something that is very much um, connected to a, a classic subcultural silhouette, but then also feeling very um, kind of high end at the same time mm. it's a really it, for me I think it's a really strong collection definitely the best one I've seen I really like it but I do think if you took Nancy Boy out as a slogan it improves the collection personally I I kind of <laughs> do I don't mean to take that away from him but I, I, I do I mean I'd probably yeah def, I, I kind of agree what do you think Jay to the collection I like it I think he used the Nancy Boy thing as more of a juxtaposition Oh yeah, to yeah, make totally. to make um, people think, and I think that's I think that's all it is to it. I think he just done that to make people think, but um, I think it's really strong. I like. I see myself and people my age wearing this a lot. It's just it's relevant. I really like it. I really like it as well. I think it's really like some of the pieces like that hoodie is sick. Like I like the t-shirt, the Nancy Boy one. I think some of the pieces are really cool, but. I think for me hearing the sort of like gay messages and then seeing the collection like you said as well, it looks quite aggressive and some of the pieces like or looks look like they're from a different show like this boy with the Nancy Boy t-shirt looks really punky or sort of like got that like slick back grease kind of vibe going on and then some of the other looks look way more like Asian inspired and I just for me it, I don't know if it fits completely. I don't like this really doesn't look aggressive to me and it everything whenever I look at it I'm like, it feels like delicate to me even though like I don't know it's like all black and it's quite heavy but to me I don't know I always think it's like delicate and nice. Yeah no I don't I don't think it that as a collection it's aggressive <coughs> at all I think it's just got a um it's got a harshness and a and a, and a, and a wearability to it that doesn't necessarily feel like it needs any spelling out in terms of what it's where it's coming from. It's it, the, the silhouettes and the fabrics and the juxtaposition of things like crocodile leathers against um, like you know kind of very Japanese looking um, uh, trousers and, and fabrications. It it's all in there. It, it's all very kind of so. So we're we're coming coherent. We're coming to the end. I just thought quickly, what did we think to the first day of man? Any thoughts on Nazir on Kotweiler, Craig Green? I loved Kotweiler's um, set. Children of the Corn. So good, yeah. And I'm happy that Nazir has gone back to making massive head wear. Head pieces. Yeah, one of my friends was under one of those. He was like, that's, he was like I've known this here for years and he put a bucket on my head. <laughs> um, and it was nice. The women's wear was good, right? Even though we're meant to be talking about men's. Yeah. Like, the hair was amazing. I love, I love it being a mixed show. It's just nice. Yeah, to, you know, it's, it's, it's just nice to look at both. Isn't it? And what about Craig Green? That looked pretty epic. Did uh, any thoughts? Jay, did you look at any of the other shows yesterday? I don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> I look at it. I saw um, Craig Green's la- last year's. I really liked last year's. It was really cool. Yeah. And does that relate, like, as a to like to 
guy who's like mostly designing streetwear, do you look at Craig Green and do you think this is another universe or does it relate or does it feed ideas or? Um, doesn't really relate, but I understand it. Like I understand what he's trying to do. So yeah, I always respect other designers, especially from London. From really cool. It was nice to see him moving into a, a kind of a more diverse fabrication range as well, like using that really nice um, kind of luxury looking textured green fabric and things like that. Because it usually feels quite like the fabrics, the statement isn't in the fabric, so there's not that much kind of diversity in the fabric. It's usually kind of like four or five fabrics for the whole collection. Mm -hmm. um, and it felt like there was a bit more integrity with the fabrication than, than normal. But there were certain certain um, silhouettes and, and, and he, he does he does really cleverly repeat um, a silhouette or a shape in many different ways. And sometimes it feels like there's one look made into five or something like that. So it's very, um, in terms of a way of designing, it's, it, it feels very um, easy to understand. And, and, and as a customer to buy, it, it, it feels very accessible. And you do see a lot of people wearing it. So it's mm -hmm. clearly, you know, it's clearly really resonating with the, with the, with the audience that you know, wants to buy men's fashion, so. Mm -hmm. So Sam, final thoughts on man, I'll go around the circle. On, uh, the, from on the man show. On the man show. Um, I think it's, for, for, I mean, I'm not that familiar with the, what's the last design called? Rory Parnell Mooney. Uh, yeah, I'm not that familiar. No, no, the, Charles. Um, Charles. Charles, Charles, yeah. I'm not that familiar with his work. Um, so I don't know whether it's a particularly uh, improvement or not. But um, I think for, for the um, uh, Rory and uh, Grace, I think really, really good, um, strong step forward. Really nice. Right. I think, yeah, I, like I said at the beginning, I love what Grace is doing. Um, she's definitely one of my favorite, if not one of my favorite designer at the moment, um, especially like you're saying with all the books and other stuff that she does, I think she's a really interesting brain and a lot of stuff's going on in the shows and outside of the shows that I think is really, really cool. And obviously, I just love to see loads of black people in fashion, so that's a win. Mm. Um, and the other two guys are also cool, but for me, not as strong because they don't, probably just because of things that I like and I'm interested in, they don't relate as much, but I do appreciate a lot of things that are going on, so I thought it was really strong, really fresh from everyone overall. Cool. Jay? Um, I really like Grace's collection. I think it's relevant and it speaks to me. I think it's good because she's bringing. I feel like she's bringing a new wave forward. I think she's going to inspire loads of people to um, just create more and include more diversity with more black people mm -hmm. in fashion. So, thumbs up for Grace. And Cora. Just, who's next? I want to know. Like, man's so exciting because it's you know you're getting new people all the time. So, it's an ongoing. There's a guy that I shot. Well, I don't know if it's seconds but there's a guy Mark Glasgow who shot, studied at RCA. Uh, or to Royal, Royal Academy, sorry, and his um, collection is incredible. So I think maybe he's going to be next because he's really cool. He does really so cool stuff. So what's that name to look out for? Mark Glasgow. He's really good. So check him out. Check him out. Check, him, check out. him out. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Wonderful, wonderful panel. Thank you very much. Um, goodbye from the vampire. <laughs>